Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the scalar product or as some people call it the dot product. Now the scalar product has many applications but one of the applications that we're going to look at here is its use in finding the angle between two vectors say A and B. But before I show you that uh, formula what I want to do is we need to establish what we mean by the angle between these two vectors. What do you think that angle is? Well, if we take two vectors, say A and B, what we can do with one of the vectors is translate it, translate it across to the other vector so that they cross over at some particular point, this point in this example here. Now clearly you can see that there are in fact two angles made by these two lines. There's this one here, let's just mark it in, let's call it theta in fact. And there's this angle over here, let's call it alpha. Which one of these angles are we looking at? Well when we use the scalar product it always works out the angle made between the two vectors and the two directions. They must come away from this point here. So it's not this angle in here. We'll rub that out. It's this one. The directions come away from this point here. Look, here's another example just to illustrate this point. We've got two vectors A and B here. So if we bring vector B to A so that they cross over. Notice that they cross over here and the two directions come away from this point. So they come away from this angle in here, not this one over here. So this would be the angle that the scalar product would work out. So let's have a look at working that angle out, whether it's this one or this one. Well, suppose the two vectors A and B are given in I, J and K components as for A, A1, A2, A3 and for B, B1, B2 and B3. Then it can be shown that the cosine of the angle between the two vectors is given by something called A dot B. Hence the name the scalar product or the dot product. I'll tell you in a moment what we mean by A dot B. And all of this is divided by the magnitude of the vector A and the magnitude of the vector B. So what is A dot B? Well it's defined as being the sum of the product of the components and by that I mean A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus finally A3 times B3. So that is the dot product or scalar product. It's this quantity here. We know already what the magnitude of A and magnitude of B are, I'll just write in the magnitude of A just as a reminder. It's the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the vector A. And the same would apply for the vector B. It would be the square root of B1 squared plus B2 squared plus B3 squared. So we're going to run through an example now where we find the angle between two vectors. And I'll also talk to you about acute and obtuse angles because that often comes up in many questions. Now in this example we've got to find the acute angle between the vectors A which is 3i plus 2j minus k and the vector B which is 2i minus 4j plus 3k. So we're going to use the formula that we've just been talking about, cos theta equals a dot b over the magnitude of a magnitude of b. What I would want to do is just draw in my two vectors, say the vector a 
which has components of 3, 2, minus 1. We'll just write it as a column vector, 3, 2, minus 1. And we've got the vector B. And I'll bring B to overlap A, like this. Okay. Now, I don't know what they look like, but uh, let's just put them down something like this. B has components 2, minus 4, and 3. So if I'm to use the scalar product, then if this were the drawing, the angle that I'd be working out would be this angle here, because this is the point where they overlap, the intersection here, and the directions are coming away from that point. So theta would work that out. So let's just work out what cos theta equals a dot b. Well, what's a dot b? the sum of the product of the components. So we'll just work out a dot b on the side here. a dot b is going to equal the 3 times the 2. 3 times 2. I know that's 6, but we'll just put it in here just to show the working for the moment. Plus, and then we've got 2 times minus 4. 2 times minus 4. And then plus, and we've got minus 1 times 3, minus 1 then times the 3. And if we work that out, we've got 6 minus 8 minus 3, which comes to minus 5. So a dot b is minus 5. Put that on the top here. And now we've got to divide this then by the magnitude of the vector a. Magnitude of the vector a, what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So that's going to be 3 squared plus 2 squared. And we can forget about the minus 1 there. Just think of it as 1. So we've got 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. And that gives us the square root then of 9 plus 4 plus 1. So that's going to be a total of 14, to so square root then 14. I'll just leave it like that. And similarly, if we come down here, we need to work out the magnitude of the vector b. And that will be the square root then of 2 squared plus the 4 squared plus 3 squared. And that comes to the square root then of 4 plus 16 plus 9. That's 29, root 29. So under here, we've got the magnitude of A, root 14, times the magnitude of B, which is the square root of 29. So we just need to get on the calculator and work this out. So working this out, what we get is that this equals minus 0.2481 and so on. And to get theta, we just need to do the inverse cos of minus 0 0.2481, and so on. And if you do this on your calculator, what you'll get is 104.36, and so on, degrees. Now, clearly, this is not an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle less than 90 degrees. What we've got in is an obtuse angle, more than 90 degrees, but less than 180. What that's giving us is this angle. OK, it looks acute in this diagram, but I didn't know what the diagram was going to look like. It was just a guess. So clearly, this is an angle of 104.36 odd degrees. We want the acute angle, which will be this one round here. Again, I know it doesn't look acute, but that is the angle that we require. So I just need to take this away from 180 degrees. So therefore, the acute angle, let's just say that, is going to be 180 degrees. Take away the 104.36 odd degrees, and that's going to give us 75.63 and so on degrees. OK, and you could give that to any accuracy that you want. Well, that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial. But what I would encourage you to do is 
have a look at the next example that follows. It uses the scalar product to work out the interior angle of a triangle. Quite an important example to do.